Admiral's Log, November 4th, 1935. Despite having a sizable fleet in the Mediterranean, very few clashes have actually occurred. It seems that the Spanish are just busy elsewhere or cowering in their ports. This makes winning the war through direct confrontation a bit harder. On the other hand, it does allow our ships to blockade the Spanish to ensure they'll be forced to surrender due to an economic crash. Our conflict with the Japanese has turned into a cold war. Neither party has made any moves. In case of the Japanese, this is likely because they have other, more local foes to worry about. In our case, it's because I was waiting for the commissioning of our new battleships. Now that they're ready, it's time to visit Japan once more. Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. It is the US Campaign 1935 that we're currently at, Episode 8, and I have Vermont and Belknap with two targets, Santo Domingo and Serio, both of the Yolo class, both with 14-inch guns, which are substantially smaller than mine, and this is two of the three Spanish battleships. I already fought an off-screen fight against a smaller task force with a couple of cruisers, nothing that special, this is the fight that I want. Because it is not just two of their three battleships, it is also three of their eight heavy cruisers. If I'm able to sink this fleet, it might push the Spanish into surrendering. It might just get that effect. So let's see what we can do with the Vermont and the Belknap. Here we go. Two Spanish battleships up ahead. Two American battleships already laying into them. And with one of the first salvos, immediately getting some damage in. It's mostly because these guys cannot return fire just yet. Their range is 23, but I don't believe I have been detected. It looks like their scouting force is not exactly in a good position yet. And because of that, they cannot see my battleships, even as big as they are. So I'm going to capitalize that as long as I can. There we go, now the Belknap has been detected. What the fuck? That's a lot of damage. These turrets on the Spanish ships need a bit more armoring. Because I think we just knocked out A and B turret. And uh, yeah, well, if it wasn't that, then there it definitely went. Um, this battleship is getting very quickly murdered. Her sister ship is still eager to fight, so let's give her some attention. And see if we can also knock out their turrets. Because knocking out this guy's turrets, at least the bow, means they're effectively useless unless they turn tail and run. Which they might, you never know. But if I can do it against the other ship as well, then we definitely have a big advantage. 42% accuracy. Uh, what are we... Is that even my doing? Who's doing that damage? Is that the bridge port? Yeah, <laughs> there was one hit from the 9-inch from the Bridgeport, dealing substantial damage against the destroyer, and with that much flooding, she should be an easy kill for everything else. Okay, we got some damage in on the second battleship. No turrets were harmed in the making of this damage yet, but accuracy 58%. Holy crap, this is what you get with veterans. You can see the difference with Seasoned. It is just not nearly as accurate. Let's see. Get the damage in. Don't care about the DDs. Please don't kill me. Let's send some torpedoes out, shall we? I mean, I have those things aboard the DDs. I might as well use them. Send it. And I rather need these DDs, not so much to deal damage against the enemy ships, but to clean up any mines or submarines that might be attacking this task force. That really is a substantial threat. Now, it looks like this battleship is getting completely mauled by... Secondaries? What are we even shooting? Because I thought we were hitting this battleship. Oh, we are! Damage to the main tower. This guy is... Very quickly getting reduced to scrap. Definitely lost another turret. Uh, the torpedoes... 
don't look like a threat. I mean, it did force the rest of their light cruisers to turn back. But my torpedoes, maybe with the exception of these two, are definitely not going to hit. So, let's finish off this battleship. You firing HE? Why, good sir? AP is perfectly fine. What? 14,000 damage? Okay, that's a lot of damage. The crown and shield got hit for 14k and swiftly ceased to exist. So that's fine. <clears throat> now the plan here is to eliminate this fleet, of course. And I suspect that once we have done that, the Spanish might surrender. That means I'm only at war with the Germans. Now I can handle the Germans. The Germans are not that much of an issue. It does mean I can pull this fleet back, make sure they get new fuel, new ammunition supplies, and that we can send them out again. And if I can trade, like, one destroyer for a complete victory against the Spanish, then I will gladly do so. This ship... Regular level of crew training, at least that's something. That's the Serio. This thing has an attitude. I'll give you that much. That's the DD that we were able to hit with a heavy cruiser. Chance to pen 8.5%. Okay, HE. You did torpedo the battleship a long time ago. So I suspect you won't be doing that anytime soon. Yeah, you're dead. You're probably just about done flooding. Focus that. Secondaries on the Langara. Or how you're supposed to pronounce that. How's the uh, Bridgeport? Doing fine. Doing fine. You're not dead. Bridgeport, see to that. Use HE. Santa Ana, with her torpedo tubes, could be a threat. Battleships, focus the Santa Ana. I don't want to be dancing around torpedoes if I don't absolutely have to. Secondary still on this destroyer. Come on. We can pen that. That's for sure. Yeah, you just torped me. Okay, turn. Expect disaster. Start turning the ship around. There we go. Did I just hit by a torpedo? No. Just regular damage then. That's more like it. Langara is down. Very good. I'm surprised this battleship managed to crawl its way back from the dead. I thought we had it. Turn. There's more torpedoes in the water. This is what I mean when I said in the previous episode, I can try fooling you guys, but I will always push my battleships into knife fighting range. This is just how I play this game. Because it's not necessarily ideal, but it does make it more fun for me. Which I think is also worth a lot. Come on. Finish off these torpedo spamming cruisers, please. Santa Ana is down. Next up. Admiral. Sorry, Almirante. Uh, we're going to do a full turn. We do have sonars. Sonar 1. It's not ideal. <sighs> Speaking of not ideal. Whoa. Oh, that was a dud on the bridge port, but that was not on the Vermont. With this many torpedoes, I was bound to get hit. Bridgeport is not supposed to get a flash fire, though. Bridgeport, retreat. Try not to run into anybody. Finish off this CA, please. Because this is starting to get really annoying. At least my battleships have a very hefty torpedo blister and don't really care about torpedoes. What are they being thrown at? 21 inch, yeah. 533s. <clears throat> Pretty decent torpedo. But if your battleship has a lot of armor, it well, and bulkheads, it tends not to really be a problem. Auto select. Please blow away the torpedo launchers on the Cardinal. Before it lays eggs. 
Ugh. Yeah, now you start destroying torpedo launchers. Now you're a little late. Now the torpedoes are already in the water. Also, is your other battleship actually retreating? I do need the points on that battleship kill. Focus that, put the secondaries on the CA. We'll be able to catch this guy in a minute. I just need to get the points from the Serio and its sister ship. Increase the flank speed. Nice. Vermont is also fine. I don't even know where my DDs are at anymore. This guy's still... not flooding? Really? That's quite impressive. Destroyed funnel. How much more do you need? Damaged main gun. <coughs> I mean, I'll keep slugging this guy. I have hundreds of shells. There you go. Structural integrity. Flooding. That's what I was going for. Oh, if you want to cut across there, that would be fantastic. Yeah, you're dead. Okay. Full ahead flank. You're dead. Deal with the destroy. Sorry, deal with the CA. And then we're going to kill that last battleship. Because I don't think that they're faster than I am. I think they're doing 25. Yeah, they're doing 25-5. I can do 30. Although with the battle damage I have sustained, I can do about 28 knots. Which is still sufficient to deal with a already damaged battleship. Blocked? HE. We're firing standard armor piercing, right? AP shells capped. Yeah. At this angle, they have a tendency to ricochet. HE does not. This guy is cruising, what, 30? Yeah, 30 knots. Okay, so we're going to take a little longer to catch the Cardinal. But HE shells will always catch it. Nothing really outruns something flying around at 775 meters per second. I would still like a hit on their engine, though. Although, at this rate, we're going to see extensive fire. Many bulkheads. No, we're not going to see extensive fire. Green crew. That's not really doing them any favors. And the spacious crew quarters. Oh, there's the flooding and the engine. That was a flat hit on the aft belt. Over pen, even. The radar return ping is... All the way over there. Wow. Destroyed a torpedo launcher. There you are. Oh, so you are running at max speed. 23.6, yeah. Oh, no matter. We'll just wipe out this heavy cruiser and then proceed to eliminate the battleship. Okay, this last bit as I'm dealing with the Santo Domingo is quite good. I have really good accuracy from Belknap. She's cruising around 24 knots, so at cruise speed she gets an even bigger accuracy bonus. And her shells are just slamming right through the aft deck, the secondary tower, the main deck. The Santo Domingo is getting battered from all all over. Shells are just going, I think, diagonally through the ship at this point. She has been deturreted. All of her main turrets are out of commission. Those eight inches are, of course, not really in a good position to return fire because I'm shooting from 12 kilometers away. Well outside, well, just outside of their secondary battery. But most of the crew has been killed off and these hits just keep coming in. Fire immediately erupts aboard the ship. Santo Domingo is done. This is a fairly, fairly beautiful shot, though. I'll grant you that much. All right. Santo Domingo is going to roll over and sink. So let's see. Is that enough to motivate the Spanish to surrender? Perhaps. Perhaps. I mean, again, 15,000 victory points from that. I did lose a destroyer. Bridgeport took some damage. But not as much damage as their ships did. Also, seeing as I got a fairly healthy amount of victory points against the Spanish overall, I do wonder if this means I might be able to claim a province. There we go. Uh, yes, I do agree to a peace treaty. Yes, 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 yes. But whether that goes through remains to be seen.
All right, anyway, um, this group is going to go back. We're going to go back to Norfolk and make sure that they all get fixed and resupplied. I have some other ships going to Norfolk and Charleston because uh, this is the Charleston itself taking 46% damage. There was another ship. Yeah, New Haven and Detroit also have taken a fairly healthy amount of damage, as did Hammond and Hatfield. The real thing that I'm interested in is how are my battleships doing, and the answer is perfectly fine. These are the new battleships, the Colorado and the New York. So I am very interested in deploying them against the enemy. I think the Spanish don't need my attention anymore, having just received a peace treaty from them. So that means that the last enemy is the Germans. They have 20 destroyers, 12 CLs, 7 CAs, and 1 battleship. So let's go say hello and move back into the North Sea. I'm going to stay well outside of these circles, because all of those mines is not something I'm going to play around with. But once the Germans do come out and meet me in the North Sea, that should be good. I also really wonder what sort of a peace treaty I'm going to get with the Germans, oh, sorry, with the Spanish. I hope it's going to be good. In the meanwhile, we have Arkansas and Long Beach, as well as her escorts, Bremerton, Dallas, Quincy, Nashville, Reno, Lang, Owen, and Swazi, Swazi, uh, heading west slash east. They're going to go to the Pacific and see if any of the Japanese fleets come out to play. And in the meanwhile, I have a fleet that was heading to SF. Yeah, there we go. That's the other battleships, Delaware, Idaho, uh, Oklahoma, and Pennsylvania. These are refueled, or at least in the process of being refueled. Once that's done, they're also going to go to the Pacific, because that is currently another enemy that I want to wrap up. So let's see what the Spanish are willing to offer me. As it turns out, um, the Spanish are not just going to be signing a peace treaty with me, if they are, but they also have a revolution. He's relieved of duty. Okay. And war continues. We're not done. Really? Okay. Um, I can get 860 million. Do I want that? Yes. Do I need to reduce my unrest? No. So, yeah, I'll take your 860 million. Oh, and the Italians are also overspending. Because, of course, they are. Four submarines? Oof. I hope the Moffat, O'Brien, and Smith Thompson are up to this job. Yes, they are. Three submarines damaged, or sunk, one damaged. No damage to my own ships. Excellent. I did apparently run into a mine somewhere, but the damage was relatively minor. <laughs> no pun intended. Uh, the Russians, not so lucky, losing two light cruisers, two more mines. And basically everybody is losing transports, especially the British. This has been going on turn after turn after turn. And yet, the British don't seem to suffer any consequences from losing that many transports. I don't understand how. They have still a really large fleet. Um, it says 119 ships, but what the game, I think, doesn't really tell you is that there are also submarines counted. Well, two submarines doesn't really count. It's fine. But look at that. They have an active fleet of 55. They got 65 ships undergoing repairs. With their level of luck, or unluck when it comes to mines, I'm not really surprised. Anyway, we have one whole destroyer out there. Where's the German fleet? Are they... Are they over in China again? Because they did that previous. Yeah. German submarines. One German DD. Map filter, please. DD, 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 BB. Hello. You there. Get your butt over here. We've got a battleship to fight. We need to do that now. All right. Um, I want to play around with the mines that the Germans have deployed, as well as the mines that have been deployed around Japan. So let's get a really cheap destroyer out there. That's capable of, well, reducing the amount of mines that the enemy has on the cheap. 
So it's going to be the smallest destroyer I can get, so long as it's able to get the highest tier minesweep, which is four, I believe. Yeah, four. So these guys essentially won't fight anything. They just need to be able to get very far. They can be as small as I possibly want. Um, they need to have a really minute tower, because this doesn't actually do anything when you're trying to get a mine detected. So that's fine. <clears throat> Um, funnels, let's go with diesel 2s for range. Get oil through that, engine efficiency 300%. <laughs> 165, we can go 34,000 kilometers. Good lord. Okay, uh, own mine laying equipment? Not really. Depth charges? Yes. I would also like these to be able to deal with enemy submarines. You never quite know what you're going to find. I got the Mark 5 5 inch. You're going to get one on the bow, one on the stern. You're going to get a triple torpedo launcher because you have to. Uh, and that is pretty much it. I don't really need to do much more than that. Well, I might be able to make them smaller. <coughs> Just making sure that I don't pay that much for them. Four weight is six. There we go. 25,000 kilometers, that's fine. Do I need to give them any upgrade? Maybe reinforced bulkheads? An anti-flood in case they do run into a mine? This is going to help with ASW. So yes, she'll get a sonar array. I believe this also works against ASW. 343. Yeah, a lot. Their ability to recon the area is very much improved the moment that you get a Radar Rangefinder 2. Standard Rangefinder, coincidence. Radio. Plus 90% reconnaissance again. Okay. And it gives me more ASW. So recon somehow impacts ASW. Alright. As for the rest, I don't really care about your armor. Um, you can have a bit more aft belt. Just to try and balance the ship out. But that's about it. I don't need a mine laying capability. I don't need anything else. Okay, um, these are the tin cans. Well, tin can, I think it would be then, not tin cans. There, save the design. We're going to crank out a whole bunch of these boats and make sure that mines and submarines are not a problem, as they currently are in the North Sea, as well as the waters around Japan, of course. Now, these things take a mere six months to build, they are only costing me 5 million, and if you compare that to the other DD, that's 28 million. That's far more expensive, and it does make these things very easy to build, very cheap. Um, fairly disposable as well, yet I think that if I manage them, I might still be able to deal some damage against other ships. So I'll take uh, 15 for 12 billion, sorry, 12 million a month, and that's going to be perfectly fine. After a few months of getting more ships into position, there was a serious incident, and I am once again at war with Russia. I don't think this is a good idea for Russia, but then again, Russia seems to be making some more odd choices lately. So um, it's entirely in line with their current character in the game. What Russia is currently facing is my US, the UK, France, Italy, Austria-Hungary, Spanish, so Spain and China. They only like the Japanese because they're in an alliance with them. And they have yet to piss off the Germans enough for the Germans to declare war on them. Somehow they still have an active fleet of 51 ships. They're repairing 15 and they're building another 9. But you can see it's all smaller stuff. It's all CL, CAs, DDs, one battlecruiser, one battleship. Now, I would love to take a bit of land over here or over here from Spain so that I can eventually start resupplying my ships here or here because having them go back and forth across the Atlantic is taking a lot of time. In the east, we have a battle group over here. This is the one with the Arkansas and the Long Beach, the New York class battleships. I was hoping to have a bit of an encounter with the German fleet that's stationed here, a couple of destroyers. But so far, the Germans have proven not to be interested in playing. Neither have the Japanese. But then again, the Japanese are also at war with China. 
So the Japanese are a little busy keeping the Chinese battleships here off of their coast. And this fleet would definitely be a really interesting target practice for my new battleships. The issue is they're constantly getting pulled out of position by the battle group that the Chinese have over here. So for now, I'm going to have to be a little patient. And since I don't have the real good ability to deal with the mines here, I just have three DDs. I'm going to keep this battle group here. I'm going to keep them positioned and that new line that you see coming in, that's another battle group with more battleships coming in. Ideally, I would try and blockade the uh, Japanese, but the Japanese currently have 64,000 projection here. I need to get that other fleet in here and I might be able to break that up. Something the game does every now and then, which is weird, is fight a ship that's not even supposed to be here. I have the heavy cruisers Baleares and Purificación. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, against the Hatfield, which I believe I had pulled all the way back to Norfolk for repairs. Why are you still here? Now, these guys cannot really do anything, but I just wanted to highlight the fact that this destroyer is still here, even though it is supposed to be in Norfolk. I'm going to just alter resolve. I think I'll lose the DD, but yeah, medium damage. Um, the Hammond is the other DD that I withdrew. What the fuck? Why am I fighting a Russian cruiser? And why is the rest of the fleet that I have over there not getting involved? I don't get it. Anyway, we do have another round with the last Spanish battleship, San Sebastian, and five transports. Task Force attacks an undefended port. Um, I think that is quite interesting that I'm getting a strike here since my fleet is over at Gibraltar. Why am I seeing the whole fleet go over here? Anyway, if this one last battleship wants to party, then we shall party. Immediately as we enter the battle, my Indiana opens up. Now, I don't really want to deal with the convoy. I don't care about the convoy. I j Sorry, I just care about the battleship because the battleship is going to yield me a lot of victory points. Any convoy ships that happen to get caught in the crossfire... Tough. <laughs> Sucks to be you. Uh, yeah, there's another one. Although... Yeah, why not? Let's just have a look at some high damage numbers, shall we? Load the high explosive. Full charge ahead. And just wipe these guys off the map. This is your target. This is your target. Now, CLs get over there. DDs get over there. And you join this. Go. Attacking a transport at 16 kilometers is proving a little more difficult than the cadets on the Indiana can handle. So it is going to be a bit of trial and error before we eventually get a hit. But worry not. Because these transports will die. Whoa! <laughs> like this. That was a very nice hit by the cruisers. As two transports sink. This should be easy pickings, especially as they're... Holy shit, as they're apparently stationary. It's always nice seeing high damage numbers. Anyway, that means we can now start working over the battleship. But whereas previously, I had exceptionally good accuracy from a veteran crew, now I don't. Now I'm going to have to use the ships as they are. Especially the battleship, so I'm going to have to give a bit more patience to the Indiana. She's only getting a 4% accuracy and the weather circumstances aren't ideal. So with a couple of shots, we might be able to slow this guy down. If not, we could just charge them down with the cruisers. My cruisers might not be armed with torpedo launchers, but I have found that they don't need them. Because these 9 inchers pack so much of a punch that I can just burn the, tar uh, the target down. Or, if that doesn't work, I can still deal an okay amount of damage with AP. Because these things fire semi-ballistic shells. And basically at any range, let's say 10,000 meter range, I can pen 14.5 inches of armor. Which will mean I can always, always pen their superstructure. The DDs in the meanwhile... Uh, why is the Cecil damaged? Anyway, <clears throat> uh, you guys can charge. You guys can try to get into torpedo range. There's still a fake radar echo here from a sinking ship. But it's not actually there. There we go. All ships open up. 
I really want to try and get peace with the Spanish. Because I have a lot of victory points against them. And I want a place to resupply, repair, and refit my ships. And I currently don't have anything in Europe. So it's time to carve out some territory in Europe. And of course, if I can get it, I will get Gibraltar. Because the moment that I'm able to get Gibraltar, I'm going to be building a lot of destroyers capable of laying mines around Gibraltar. And nobody will get in and out of the Mediterranean without my explicit say-so. I mean, sure, they can try building ships in the Mediterranean. But leaving? Hell no. That is entirely up to me. Whether those ships will get past my minefields or not. For now, focus on the San Sebastian. Focus on getting the Spanish to their knees. Because they, I think they got like 10 ships left. And just make sure that this thing is over. This war is finished. And the Spanish are done. After a fairly swift battle, the battleship has been eliminated. The five transports have been eliminated. And I gained almost 4,000 victory points. The battleship did not quite go down without a fight. And that means that some of my destroyers took some damage. A light cruiser took a hit, but it wasn't really that severe. So at this point, another 4,000 victory points in the bag. I really expect the Spanish to surrender. I expect them to be wise at this point. And I hope that my president agrees. Because I don't need further conflict with the Spanish. I just need Gibraltar. <laughs> the British are having some fun with mines again. I don't even know where they're running into all of these mines. Friendly mines! You're running into your own minefield. Holy crap, there's no such thing as a friendly mine. Good lord, that's pretty bad. Interestingly, still no word from the Spanish. They got nine ships, one battlecruiser. I don't even know where that thing is. Oh, this is mined, by the way. <clears throat> Where's the Spanish BB? Yeah, this is Charlotte and the Indiana. This is what we just saw. I only got the... What the hammer is here? Get back, idiot. Go home. You have no business being here. And you do have fuel. So get out. Weird bug. There's also... Is that a German? No, that's a Spanish. Okay. Why am I not seeing any conflicts over here? Because I'm seeing ships which are definitely intending to go back to the North Sea. Two DDs there. Russians here. More DDs. More Russians. More CA. Yet, <laughs> beyond sending ships back and forth to their colony, the German fleet really isn't doing anything. That's weird. I was really hoping for a bit of a fight. Ah, look who it is. Delaware, Idaho, Oklahoma, and Pennsylvania. Now, this is going to severely change the board. Because now I have 61,000 points of power. I'm going to need a bit more. A bit more to blockade them. So I need to be able to wipe out the Japanese ship. If these guys could come out and play, that would be most appreciative. So let's go here. And let's see if these guys want to play. Finally, after a long time, the Spanish see reason and surrender. Peace has been signed. And let's see. Is it in there? It is... Oh! Shit, it's not. No, of course not, because Gibraltar is British. Idiot. Okay, Gibraltar is British, but I am getting Guam. That's for sure. Uh, I don't particularly care about Guantanamo. The Western Sahara... Mm, no, I'd rather have the Canary Islands, actually. <clears throat> if you don't mind, I'd rather have the Canary Islands, because that's a nice place to resupply. So, tell me, what does this give me? Okay, I feel quite cheated. Because I believe I made uh, peace with the Spanish. And I supposed to get the Canary Islands out of it. But um, I don't. It's just not working. I don't get the Spanish Island, or I don't get the Canary Islands. So I went over and looked at Guam. What's happening in Guam? Well, not much, because it's still owned by the Spanish. I don't get this. This used to work in the previous version of the game. Why is it not working in this version of the game? Moreover, I'm at peace with the Spanish. Why the fuck am I still blockading them? It makes no sense. 
Just fix your damn game already. I mean, this episode, I didn't have any bugs. That's quite the performance. Why am I then seeing that I don't get the areas that I claimed and that the Spanish allowed me to take because I am now at peace with them? I don't understand. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon, hopefully with more provinces and otherwise with more ships. Thanks for watching. See you soon.